Hello and welcome to News Click, where today we'll be discussing in the situation in Syria, especially after the attack on Turkish troops on March 19th, which led to two soldiers being killed. The attack was reportedly carried out by sections affiliated to Al Qaeda, which Turkey has been supporting. To talk more about this, we have with us Prabir Prakashsa. Prabir, thank you for joining us. So, one of the key aspects of this attack has been that it was carried out by groups, reportedly carried out by groups which Turkey has been supporting all this while. And these groups have apparently been unhappy with the March 5th ceasefire, which was signed between Russia and Turkey, which also mandated that they would patrol the M4 highway. So, at that point, we had talked about how this could actually backfire on Turkey and Turkey could be in a tough situation. The ceasefire itself could unravel. So, are these attacks kind of indicative of that process happening? I think there are two aspects to it. One is that the M4 highway was always critical for the Syrian government. And they had said that that was non-negotiable, that the M4 highway would be open to the Syrian government traffic. Now, this was really what the battle last month was all about, how to take big M5 and M4 free of militant disruption or militant control. And M4, M5 is now completely within the Syrian government's control. M4 was something which they had to fight more if they had to take over that territory. And that was going to be difficult because it, it also has, uh, on one side, Idlib, the other side, Jishul Shugor, both of which are under the control of the this Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda light, or some other forces which are working together. Now, Turkey had given them protection, clearly. In the battle over M5, Turkey had protected them and also tried very hard to aid them by even striking Syrian uh, government forces. So given this, something had got to give because, as you remember, this was a long-time agreement which had been made that M4 and M5, Turkey would guarantee that this would not be under the control of the militants. So the compromise this time was M4 would be jointly patrolled by both Syria, the forces of uh, the Russian government as well as the Turkish government. So the Turkey and Russian forces would ensure that M4 would be open to all traffic. This obviously was not something that liking of the uh, uh, forces inimical to the Saudi Arabian uh, Syrian government. And particularly because this also means giving up control of Jishul Shugur, which is something which is still under the control of these forces. So I think that's the reason for the unhappiness. But at the same time, let's look at the other picture. Can these rebels or this uh, rebel forces, which are really Al Qaeda like, really hold out against Syrian government, Russian forces, and Turkish forces? I don't think that's likely. So essentially, they may say that they are not under the control of the Turkish government, which is true, but that they are not really a B team of the Turkish government, which is true, but at the same time, can they survive? without Turkish protection is a big question. And I don't think Turkey will now give them protection and will try, particularly after this, to see that M4 highway is kept open. So I'm feel till, still hopeful that Turkey will abide by the agreement and ensure that M4 is kept open. Now, what it means for the larger uh, picture in Italy is not clear to me, because this also allows Turkey an official position to move its forces into Idlib governate, which is Syrian territory. So in some sense, it also allows for a greater role of Turkey within the Idlib government itself, and not just you know, de facto supporting the rebel forces, but as a part of this agreement. So I think it's a double-edged sword as of now, but I do think that it also makes the position of the rebels increasingly untenable unless they completely come under the Turkish protection. But on the other hand, Turkey also is in a bit, has a bit of a Hobson's choice, so to speak, because on the one hand, uh, there is a refugee problem, and especially at this time of coronavirus with chaos in the government and a, a, a climate of general fear going around in society. This is an issue they have to deal with very strongly. On the other hand, any sort of uh, lessening of what they see as pressure easily gives uh, opportunities for the Syrian government to actually step up its offensive if, it, if it's permitted to? Well, you know, the, the refugee problem is a much bigger one. 
And these refugees do not really want to come back to Syria. They essentially are now looking as economic migrants and they would like to migrate to Europe. With the coronavirus, as you said, fear what it is. I don't think there is any prospect now of this becoming a big issue. I think Turkey will have to control what it earlier was relaxed about, letting the economic refugees enter Europe. I think that's not a likely scenario as of now. So I think that these things will go on the back burner for now. Right. And uh, as far as the Syrian government is concerned, which is the other major player in this uh, situation right now, uh, the ceasefire itself was seen as a possibility for the Syrian government to sort of reinforce its soldiers, take some time, maybe gather some reinforcements and prepare for the next round of an assault, preferably again with uh, Russian Air Force assistance. So do you see that prospect panning out in the next couple of months? If you see the map itself, south of M4, you will see that becomes an isolated territory for the militants. So that section is likely to fall uh, to the Syrian government forces and they're mobilizing in that way. The other part is Jishul Shugor. I think that's something also the Syrian government will probably take over. So that will leave Idlib and the Idlib town to the uh, Syrian-Turkish border. That's the only territory which will still remain under militants' control and under the protective umbrella of the Turkish forces. So we'll have to see how that pans out. For the time being, Syria would like to focus now back probably after this, M4, M5 being uh, free, to like to focus back on its eastern border because that's something which also needs to be uh, controlled. They still have American troops over there. There are still oil wells not under their control. Whatever oil is there in Syria is in that part. Then you have also the border with Turkey. So I, on the on the, what is called the Kurdish side. So all of that, I think, is what their focus can go back once M4, M5 are both firmly under the control or at least traffic being able to move in, the, in this part. And finally, there's definitely the question of the Turkey, Russia, a very, a very tentative alliance that they have formed. And we saw this earlier play out in the north also, and now we are seeing this playing out here. But on the other hand, of course, the U.S. has also been sort of trying to, uh, what do you call, win Turkey back. So as far as Turkey is concerned, is there any leeway for it to sort of negotiate with both the powers? Is there a possibility of them trying to, say, pivot back to NATO and the European alliance, especially at this time? At this point, it doesn't look like Turkey wants to pivot back to NATO. I think it's increasingly clear that Turkey is, wants to play an independent role in the region. And it is willing to come to some understanding with the Russians because they recognize that Russia is the only external power who can play some role in the region. And it doesn't think that the United States today has a long-term future in, in the region. And particularly as its basic allies in the region are really the monarchies. And they increasingly would have a hard time and with the oil crisis, the oil prices have been crashed. I don't think they look upon the United States as a major player now in the region. Thank you so much, Prabir. That's all we have time for today.